All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Aaron here back once again from the Remote Closing Academy podcast. And in this episode, in episode number two, guys, this is, uh, I know I said this in episode one, but this one's pretty crazy. This is a heavy hitting episode. And the guy that we're talking to, just to give you a sneak peek, was able to make $70,000 in commissions in a single month. I said that right. You didn't hear it wrong. 70, 70 in a, in a month, not six months, not what some people make in a year in one single month on top of learning so many different skills on top of being able to negotiate different deals with the different offers that he had coming his way. Just so many amazing things. If you are someone that is thinking about getting into remote closing or you don't know anything about remote closing and you're like, that sounds pretty good. Like those numbers that Aaron just talked about you're gonna to wanna to listen to this video. Now, before we jump into it, just wanna put a quick disclaimer. By watching this video, I'm not saying that you will make that amount of money, to be honest with you. He's in a, a top 1% of being able to find and negotiate those offers. Can you still make a good amount of money? Yes, of course, but I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there that I'm not saying that you're gonna make that same money by just watching this episode. So, as long as you watch this, you take notes, and you you know, you know obviously take some next steps in implementing the things that you do learn, you're gonna be that much closer to becoming a remote closer and uh, not having to work a nine to five or doing you know what you're currently doing that you might not be too happy with. So, with all that stuff out of the way, let's jump into today's episode. Uh, Charles, how's the day, man, so far? I am doing fabulous, man. It's Friday, so it's follow-up Fridays. Just love to hit up my people and c- close deals, but uh, it's been an exciting week, so I'm glad to be on here. Cool, man. And I just wanted to go ahead and publicly say, too, I uh, appreciate the patience earlier. We actually had to reschedule this call, uh, but that's that's kind of the, the hard part when we get to this point of, of sharing people's stories of success with an RCA. It's like, you have a full schedule of, of calls that you're taking now, so it's like, I have to be like, all right, let's let's make sure we're getting in, in the call. So I do appreciate the uh, being able to reschedule this. So, um, dude, before we jump too, too deep into like, you know, about like the remote closing and, and the gig you, you booked and, and things like that, um, just maybe just help us take a step back. Like what were you, I guess, doing before remote closing, um, you know, in terms of like, you know, job, career, things like that. And let's talk a little bit about that. So I actually retired at age 40. Um, that was five years ago, retired at age 40, started winning in marketing. And I was a closer when I retired. So you talking about 2017. And around 2018, I just got burnt out. Um, I made a lot of money, but every offer I in, either the company would close down or we have to do another launch. So I just got burned out, quit closing. I said, you know, it's, it's too much. And I didn't know about, you know, training programs. I did go through Russ Rufino, but I didn't know anything about how to reach out to people for other jobs. So I just started driving Uber for the last four years. Now I was making six figures of Uber. I was recruiting people. I had a major accident and, um, you know, I made a lot of money during COVID. And when COVID started, I was like, I needed a COVID plan. So I went into marketing. I already knew how to write. But I just couldn't find my niche. And then come November, one of my ex-clients who had a coaching program was like, hey, man, you need to get back into closing. He's, he goes, uh, actually, he was a doctor. He opened up his new clinic. The reason why he opened up, because when I joined his program in 2018, he had no closes. I closed 15 people his first month at, at 8000 each. He's like, you need to get back in. I saw Cole for a year, but like, I'm not going to do this. He goes, you know what? I'll pay for it. So I went back to Cole, December 3rd, 3rd. I kept quiet. I've closed a lot. I kept quiet. I had my coach. I didn't tell anybody I did. And so just for about a month, I just kept doing the lessons because I was humble. I, I had a little imposter syndrome uh, for the last three years because, like I said, I couldn't find a good deal. I thought I thought I wasn't good enough anymore. Then I did a group coaching call. I did a mock and Corey's like, what the heck? So I told Corey, my um, my coach, um, you know, my story. He was like, you came in here humble every day, you know. And I did have a struggle because people would tell me stuff. I'm like, you don't know nothing. I didn't close millions. But <laughs> I, stayed, <laughs> I stayed humble, went through the process. Corey got me into the pipeline. And from there, it's just um, uh, I self sourced my own deal, wrote my own contract. Uh, I put everything I wanted in the contract, got it. It was a startup. And four months later from the startup, the startup has hit three million in sales, and I'm doing great. But um, it's been a wild ride, and um, this is probably the best coaching program I've been in. But from start to finish, my coach to the interview process guided me um, to where I am today. So that's just a quick Love history. It, man. Um, yeah, quick yeah, history. yeah. I, I, there's there's a ton of things that I, I you know just curious about, and I think a lot of people would take take some stuff um uh, to, you know take some t- uh, stuff away from. What's, uh, you know, you talked about imposter syndrome and I actually was talking to, uh, you know, a, a client about this a couple of days ago as well. Um, you know, what, what did you do to like get out of that, like imposter syndrome? Cause I think like, 
you know, for, for a lot of people, especially jumping into a new industry, right? You, you have had some sales experience, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, when you, when you start to question like, you know, what makes me like good enough to close for this company, they're doing, you know, millions a month in sales or yes. whatever it may be. What, what were some of the things that maybe helped you get, uh, get out of that, that imposter? So growing up in the community, African-American, black, whatever you want to call it, we don't do therapy. And then, um, at the point of, you know, we, we had a couple of coaches who all they talked about was therapy. Co coach um, Corey said he had therapy. So when I went through the pipeline, they told Corey, Charles has experience and skill. He's not confident enough. You need to help him. And it was just at the point, um, somebody introduced me to my mentor now who was a therapist. She does it pro bono, but she's a millionaire. She does it because she loves it. So um, I got with her in February, two weeks with her. Um, we set up a time every, uh, every Thursday, two weeks with her. I had 11 interviews, six offers. I don't, the Damn. switch just came. And um, Corey's like, hey, maybe you need to work. I, I wouldn't say therapist, but get you a coach. And she was pro bono. And she knows marketing and sales. So it just worked out. And two weeks after that, uh, there were some pipeline interviews. I mean, they were great. It's just, I knew I wanted to make 20K or more. And a self-sourcing deal just came up, wrote the contract. I mean, I was like, I was the first person on the team. And it just went on from there. I did. I was on another closing gig. I found a closing gig for um, a sports fantasy company because I just wanted to get in the trenches. And when I got there, I closed my first 10 deals there. But it was just getting that help from the pipeline and stepping out of comfort zone, going into something that's not, you know, talked about. Now you see mental health on the news, mm. but getting someone who helped me. I mean, I still meet with her every Thursday. Other opportunities I've met with her. It was just getting, it was the pipeline in Corey. And imposter syndrome was, because I quit in 2018. I thought I wasn't good enough, even though I had a lot of sales. Mm. And I was with a couple of companies. And funny, the, um, the one that replaced me at the company came from Cole Gordon. <laughs> Isn't that oh, funny? Shoot. So <laughs> when I was like, she was like, you need, maybe you need an e com offer. And I was on the wrong offer. I know e com, I know finance. And so with this was the perfect alignment. But imposter syndrome coming in where you have had success. And you don't know why you don't think you're that good enough. And so the pipeline and Corey led me to my mentor, which has led me to this point. So when you're having that, it, it took an outside person to step out the box I was in to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's golden. I mean, and for those of you that are listening, like you can hear a lot of similarities of like, you know, and I'm not saying like, you know, you have to find a coach to like solve your problems, but like, you know, you found a coach to help on, you know, the, you know, or therapist, right. Which is basically a coach, right. Helping you through, you know, what's, what's going on in your head. And you know, the same thing on, on the closing side, right. Whether it's, you know, uh, Corey within the program and just having people that are already there that have been through what you're trying to do and, and helping you solve those, solve those, those issues, whether it is, you know, for on the sales side or, you know, that's something that's in your head. Um, so that's, that's golden, man. So I, I guess I'm just curious too, like what, uh, how did you originally find, I know you said the, the, the offer that you were selling before was the ones that, that stumbled upon RCA or, you know, Cole stuff, correct? The offer, no, the offer I had, I, I self-sourced both. Uh, the offers okay. Cole were good. I just, I knew, I knew the area. I just didn't like the particular area. One was a real estate offer, but I know flipping and apartments. This was uh, a different one taken back. It's a different financing approach, which I didn't like. Uh, there was a uh, marketing agency offer. Um, I, I passed on that one. And I, I really wanted to Forex, but they hired somebody before me. So I, I went and took a fantasy gambling sports because I know that. Mm -hmm. I just went and took it because I wanted to get... Uh, I couldn't find anybody who could mock with me and give me positive feedback. So I need to go in the trenches. Yeah. And then we have great, we have great groups. Um, Kyle and um, Chris, the coaches led me to a self-sourcing part. Uh, the guy had my resume, saw me on LinkedIn, hooked me up with the owner and we went from there. And I was like, I need this. So I wrote the whole sales contract for the team now. Nice. So I wrote in the commissions. I said, I want this and this. And I go, when we reach a certain point of stores sold, I want every salesperson to have a store. It makes no sense for us mm -hmm. to tell you to buy an e-commerce platform and we don't have one. So I wrote that in the yeah. contract. I say after a year, I want equity since this is, uh, you know, we have monthly revenue for my clients. I want some of that. So I wrote all of that. The sales people are loving it. But um, yeah, I went out and reached to the companies I wanted to work with. Uh, Astro Flipping, Grant Cardone, and just turned in my resume. And this one came up. I said, ooh, I have a chance to start something. If it doesn't work out, I just go into the pipeline. But yeah, with me, I just went in 
and I do have experience. I knew what I wanted. So I just went in. And if I didn't, if I didn't get it, I didn't have it anyway. Well, what, what was I going to lose? So yeah. that's what I did. Yeah, man. I think that's like, there, there's so many things that you've, you've broken down there that, you know, I, I think some people, if they are already within this ecosystem of like remote closing, high ticket sales, it's like, you know, I don't want to be like a, a salesperson or a setter, but like, you've kind of created this into something more than just like closing deals. Like you were creating the contracts, you're negotiating much more mm-hmm. than just like taking some commission. You know what I mean? I think that's the kind of the cool part of, of where we are within, you know, that we call it the alternative education industry of, you know, yes. it's just, it's so it's new, but it's not, but it's new enough to where people like you or, you know, anyone that wants to can come in and be like, Hey, here are my terms. I understand my worth behind what I can offer to you. This mm-hmm. is what I'm putting out there. And you know, you're, you're a great example of, of how it's, how it's working out in your favor. So, um, you know, kind of breaking into, let, let's talk about RCA a little bit. And, and you're obviously, you've talked a lot and, and said some great things so far. But uh, when you when you first came into, you know, to RCA and, you know, having some of that sales sales experience in the background, what are like maybe some of your biggest takeaways or, or favorite parts uh, of the program um, just in general? For me, it was the mock calls. So RCA is great, but the truth is most people are not going to do the work. So I knew if I stay consistent, I got on calls every day. It was funny when I came in. I had pneumonia. I didn't get COVID because I wanted to be different. <laughs> so I got pneumonia. So you pneumonia. And I couldn't do the talking, but I said, no. And being retired, I mean, I am 45 and I've learned, you know, if you look at sports athletes, they are consistent. I know if I can stay consistent, I can beat everybody else. So I just showed up every day on the calls, no matter what time it is, did the mock calls live. Um, I did about 50 mock calls before my first um, job interview, but I knew if I stay consistent, I could uh, leapfrog the herd. And even though I knew what I wanted, I wanted to come in humble. I didn't want to come in conceited because I might, or, or arrogant because I might have missed something. Mm-hmm. And I've been, like I said, I've been watching Cole for a year. So from that part, um, it was just staying consistent, showing up every day, and I learned new nuggets. And when you have a coach, I learned stuff from there. So uh, it was just, and the training was awesome, easy. I could speed through it. I could listen to it on my phone in my downtime. So I just scheduled my time, went on in and took the training. And the key for me was if I remain consistent, no matter if I knew something, I knew I could leapfrog the herd. Mm-hmm. Love it, man. What, um, you know, cause we've talked a lot about the, uh, like the, the positives, right. Of, of the program, but what, you know, I wouldn't say like the negatives of the program, but what do you think were maybe some, some bottlenecks for you or maybe some you know, just maybe some difficult parts within the program, uh, whether it was the implementation or, you know, just certain parts of it being a little bit more challenging. Like what would you, you know, for someone that's maybe coming in like, Hey, this is something to, to maybe look out for Here's one of the things that I struggled with. Uh, everybody thinks the pipeline is magical. And number one, you have to know what you want. Uh, when you pay, they think this magic is going to happen. I'm in the pipeline and they start complaining and RCA is just like life. It's not perfect. For me, it was okay. they're not going to see this difference now, but for me, um, RCA exploded in February. So I still have personal contact with my coach. Mm-hmm. Hey, you guys just exploded. And so um, for new people to say, I can't get this, I can't get that, or or this is not the right, this is not the right fit. And maybe you guys need to change a little, but everybody expects RCA to give them that magical job. And you know, I didn't pay RCA. I didn't pay for this just to look for my own. And um, truth is, if you look for your own, you'll probably find something better. And I want to make 10 if you don't have the skills. So I don't, I don't say any bottlenecks for me. Per person, I don't, yeah. I don't think I have any, but I can see where the new people are coming in. I expect this, this, and this. And I was like, they like, I want to make 20,000. Well, you have never made 20,000. <laughs> but what makes you think? And um, yeah. And I want to put the perspective. It's not that, I'm not going to say you guys are not projecting it, but if you're going to college or a job, technically if you get on a job it's what three six months probation if you're going to college it's four years if you're being a doctor eight or lower not eight or nine years but people don't understand if you just focus on rca for a year a year and a half don't let the shiny objects come because you're going to get hit by jeremy Miner. he's good you're gonna get hit by other companies or you're gonna get hit with crypto if you focused on this for a year you're going to be at the same income level as a doctor or a surgeon mm. if you focus and get better and that is where not for me, but what the bottleneck is, I knew that. Well, I've been here before, but for new people, and I try, because I don't mock anymore, but when they have interviews, I said, schedule with me, I can lead you through. But the truth is, if you master a skill, and it's any other skill, if it's marketing, it's going to take 12, maybe uh, six, 12, 18 months to get there. 
<laughs> but you're going to make six figures if you stick with RCA. Mm. And um, I think that's where the bottleneck is because people want this magical thing to happen. It doesn't happen anywhere else in life. If you won a lotto, you have to wait two months to get that money, right? <laughs> you don't come right away. Yep. So that I think, I don't know if it's RCA, but I try to guide people in there. I need money now. Well, Teddy Clash, your fault. But <laughs> for me, with no bottlenecks, because I, I knew what to look for. I go through coaching programs. So I knew what to ask for. All my answers got, you know, everything I needed got answered. I mean, but for new people, it's just, if you stick for a year, and don't worry about what anybody else is making either. Because the truth is, yes, I'm going to have a huge month. But um, I'm number four on a team of seven. The, the, the top money maker in my company did 190000 in commissions in one month. Goodness. This month I'm going to surpass them. But yeah, I'm on a team. And that's why I come every day. I'm on a team of killers. So I don't worry about what they're making. I say, how can I get better? Because it's going to come. So for the new people listening, if you commit to RCA, nothing else. You stop doing all these things that pop up. If you commit to it, you will replace your income. And if you keep going, you're going to be, make that surge in lawyer money. Commit a year instead of eight years in school and all that. So yeah. no bottlenecks for me. I knew what I was looking for, but I can see what happens for the new people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. It, I've even like being on Facebook and you know being a part of so many different uh, email uh, newsletters and subscriptions and whatnot. It's like we're constantly just smacked with new stuff. You know, mm -hmm. like make money with this. Do you know do whatever. And in reality, like like you said, it's 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 not that like you know does RCA work more than some of these things. It's just okay, whatever you put your time into, it's that's what you're going to see see the results yeah. from. You know, it's the the shiny object syndrome that so many like I've fallen into it tons of times. Like even, you know, mm -hmm. to this day there's there's sometimes I'll, you know, I'll click into an email and uh, you know, kind of like watch like a video or something and then I remind myself like, hey, nope, don't go down mm -hmm. this route route again. Uh, cause you know, it always leads to again spending three months here, six months here, and then, you know, two years later you, you aren't any further than than when you started because you, you just don't focus on on the one thing. Um those those WMDs, weapons of mass distraction. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna have to steal that one, that WMDs. Uh, so dude, we we touched on it a little bit a second ago. You, you know, you were talking about how your uh, you know, someone in your team's making hundred and ninety thousand in a single month, right? And that's commissions mm -hmm. for those of you that are listening. Um, you know, when we compare remote closing to something like, you know, starting a marketing agency or, you know, any, any, like starting your own business, there's, there's more that goes into that, right? There's expenses, there's the responsibilities yes. of building team. There's, just, there's so many things as opposed to with remote closing, we're just, you know, we're learning one skill and then, you know, jumping into, uh, you know, just really, really getting, getting good at there, kind of like what you were talking about. So, uh, you know, we don't have to go into like too deep into specifics, but you know, what is the opportunity you're on right now? Like what is maybe income potential and, and what are some of the, you know, some of the wins that you've been able to, to take home from, from that? For this one, yeah, we, we have offers that range from 35K to 200,000. And so um, we do have a higher class of clientele um, and that sales person had an excellent month. And for me, starting off, um, I've earned in three months around about 40K in commission. This month, I have a pipeline. If it closes by the 31st, it'll be around 75K in commissions for this mm -hmm. month alone. And my pipeline keeps growing. Uh, we do have an excellent marketing team. And it has been some bumps and rolls. This is a startup. It has been some bumps. Um, I went 30 days without a leads at one point, mm. and I still crushing it. But, you know, and, um, and I tell people, when you go on an offer, you have to be a product of what you're selling. So like, like I said, we're in e-commerce automation. My store is about to start. All our stores about to start. Uh, our average client after 12 months is doing about our client, our partners are doing about $10,000 in passive income with our management team running their stores and their e-commerce businesses. So we, I just created another income stream for that when I joined this and this is what I wanted. So, and I want clients to understand when you, um, excuse me, when you join a team, you have to know the product. So if you're with Tony Robbins, which you guys place a lot, you're going to get access to all Tony Robbins don't use it. If you're in a Forex, you're going to learn how to trade. So we're creating income streams um, with that, but the closing is beautiful. And what I like about it, yeah, I, I'm here to get paid. I'm here to make six, go up to six figures per month, but my clients are happy with me. Um, mm -hmm. And I have a thing when they, when they reach a certain income, they trekking me to a steak dinner. So I have eight steak dinners coming <laughs> for hey, me. There we I don't, go. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they text me, Charles, I made the first sale. But yeah, if, if everything closes, it's still going to be 72. I just want the 72 in this month. Yeah. But the commissions is there. And like I said, when I go to the pipeline, eight or 9,000 wasn't going to do it for me. 
that's why I look for my own offers. And um, yeah, it's going to be a beautiful month. August is even looking better. And right now it's summertime. Most people, most high ticket jobs slow down. We're ramping it up. I said, hey, let's increase. Let's go ahead to the market. But yeah, it's, it's, it's been a beautiful four months. Let's see. April, March, March, April, May, June, July. You're talking about almost six figures in five months in mm-hmm. earned commissions. Um, starting off, when I started, we had no website. Uh, I had to close and get deposits with no track record. People were like, who yeah. are you? <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of the management team has been sued, so I had to go through all that. I was the first person here. A lot of bumps in the road. Uh, when we ran the marketing, I had appointments four weeks out. And you know in this business, if people don't talk to you right away, they fall off. Yeah. But we have grown. Uh, this company is not all me, but you know, coming from zero, you can't even find us and doing about three million right now. Um, you know, it's just it's just fabulous. But for me, it's just I have a certain number I want to hit, and I have a certain number of people I want to help. Because number one, I love the results. I love when they call me. Number two. They're going to stick with me even if I leave this company because I have provided value for them. Mm-hmm. And um, but yeah, this offer and I know I have some numbers for new people, but the numbers are there no matter where you're at because even if you had a you're only making five thousand a month, you're making five thousand a month from a new skill you just learned. Mm-hmm. So that is the key, and you could just grow from there. And the reality is, yes, RCA is great. RCA has a lot of people. Are you going to stay consistent enough to jump the herd? And that is the key with RCA. If you can stay in going, I don't care how long it takes, you will get to the next level. Yeah. Dude, isn't it crazy how like you know, a couple of minutes ago you said, you know, the eight, eight, eight or nine K isn't going to cut it for me. Right. And it's like some people <laughs> listening to this is like eight or nine K is what I make in three months. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Like the, the levels that are there. So I did want to take a, a really quick second and, and kind of just explain this to everyone that's, that's listening is, you know, one of the biggest questions that I get, cause I'm, you know, manage a lot of the Instagram stuff and whatnot is people are like, how is that even possible? Like, why would someone pay, you know, Charles, why would somebody pay you $72,000? Right. And it's it, the, the thing to understand guys is 72,000, right. That's going to Charles is a very small percentage well, I wouldn't say very small, but you know, it's a percentage of what the company that he's working for is, is making. And then Mm -hmm. also what the clients are making. Right. So it it really is, you know, if you're listening to this and you're like, I, I just, I, you know, I'm making $3,000 a month or $2,000 a month. And you're like, I just, I can't fathom those numbers is just understand that there's like Charles said, there's a, uh, there is a, you know, an exchange of value that's happening and you are going to get, you know, Cole talks about this quote all the time by uh, Elon Musk is you get paid in the proportion of the problems that you solve. So if you solve big problems, mm-hmm. you're going to make big money. And Charles, Charles is solving big problems of getting these, you know, these 200,000, you know, up to $200,000 offers into the hands of these people that are going to make much more than that if they implement, um, you know, the, the, the tools that are there to, to see that success. Um, so I just wanted to, to kind of take a little segue and explain, cause sometimes people are like, you made $72,000 this year no in a month like it's you know based people's year year salary in a month which is which is crazy um also man and it also does i have a i have a team of killers remember i took three years off even though i had the skill set mm-hmm. these are uh the guy who made he's doing 190 uh right now he just got diagnosed with something mm-hmm. he just had 200k he hasn't been on a call or phone in, in about two weeks and his clients are still sending in but when you're with a good offer or good people, they level up your game too. Mm-hmm. And that's why people always ask, why are you always showing up to the calls? Number one, I'm learning because RCA is um, enrolling new people and those people are my clients too. So I'm hearing their problems, which is helping me get better. But I just want to get better. And also with remote closing, if you're at home, I don't have a full-time job. This is what I do. This is my community because I don't have a job. I don't have the, what you call the Christmas parties. And I have my own network within remote closing that I can connect with people. But coming in, you're learning from new people. Like, oh, I just had a client who had that problem. And just staying connected. Charles, you're always showing up. Yeah, because this is how I learn. But when you're with a good offer, and I tell people, don't feel bad if you're doing bad because you're going to learn. I mean, I would have known I can do. I mean, I've seen people. But if um, the other salesperson didn't do 190, will I be at 72? He broke that barrier for us to know, hey, we can do it too. Yeah. And now I'm number, I'm, at this point, I'm still number one, still the close. At this point, I'm number one. But your team, I guess, you know, raises everybody. So when you're on a good offer, it may take some time to find a good offer. 
Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, Charles, you know what to do. No, I went three years closing and company shut down. $400,000 in chargebacks because the company, so I had my um, setbacks. But this is where I knew where to look. So it might take time, but you don't quit. Mm-hmm. That's the key. If you keep going, you beat everybody else. Yeah, dude, that's, that, I'm really glad that you, that you brought that up. Cause I think, you know, when, when we, when we talk about interviews and people just see testimonials, like they, they see the, they see the, the butterflies and rainbows that, the, you know, that's what they see, right? They don't see mm-hmm. the three years that it took you to, to, to hit this offer that like everything comes together. It's a good team. It's a good product. It actually helps people. It fulfills you, right? There's so many different things that, that come into getting placed in an offer that not only makes sense for the company, for the client, but also makes sense for you. And that's, you know, the, the perfect storm that happens that allows you to get to that point. But you know, it's, it's, it's not something where, you know, could you get lucky and get really, really good at sales in a short amount of time and get placed on a, you know, on a golden offer crazier things have happened, but at the same time, it's like, it just happens in that you got to pick, pick your poison, right? Do you want to, you know, work at a job that you hate for a long amount of time? Or do you mm-hmm. want to be patient with uh, knowing that everything's going to work out if you work on your skills, get better at what you're doing, right? Just, just really build that value in yourself. Cause this, this industry isn't going away, right? People, there's businesses that are literally just like trying to find people like Charles and like anybody that, you know, potentially watching this episode to, to come in and, and help facilitate that transaction of product into, into new clients. So, um, yeah. super powerful stuff, man. What's, um, you know, if, if you were, you know, someone that's, that is listening to this and, you know, I'm sure you've probably seen people, you know, skeptical of, of, of the program and, and what it could do. So what would you say to someone that is on that fence or like, okay, this, this does sound interesting. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of thinking about doing it, but I do have some hesitancy, hesitancy behind it. What would you say to that person? I wouldn't, I would ask, what is the hesitancy? Cause you're going to spend it anywhere. Mm-hmm. And um, what is better than waking up and you have leads there, leads who want to talk to you and you can go ahead and close them and change their life, uh, create, change their life completely. What is better than that? But what is the alternative? I mean, um, any skill you learn is going to pay off because I was, I did, I was trying to do digital marketing for a year and a half. And uh, if you, if you, one of them, I'm not going to say the name, was great. And he says, Charles, he goes, I'm going to give you a refund because you're just, this is not for you. And that's how I got back over here. I, I tried to be a digital marketer. And the reason why I tried to be a digital marketer, I didn't want to talk to people. So, because I was like, oh, imposter syndrome. Yeah. But if you're looking at this, if you put the time in, it's going to work. And I'm not saying this is the cure-all, but what else are you going to do? Because if you're not going to do this, you're going to spend the money somewhere else and quit. So uh, I wouldn't say the hesitancy. I say, are you committed to uh, putting a year in to learn a skill that never goes away? Remote closing has been around for years. It's just taking on different different stuff and people's like well can i get a job if you clicked on rca you are being retargeted by every other high ticket <laughs> company yeah you could just turn it um i don't care if it's real estate forex uh diets if you have to fill out a form to get a consultation call that's a high ticket company you can go work for it's mm-hmm. hundreds yeah and if you're worried if you put the skill in you will leapfrog 90 percent all you have to be to get started is 20% than the rest. They're going to quit. They're going to complain. People think, oh, I, I'm special. Nah, <laughs> I just show up every day. That's the key. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is just show up. Yeah, man. Dude, th- thank you for that. Because I think, um, you know, a couple of those things that you that you incorporated in there, I think, you know, there, there's a good amount of people that, that, could, that could come across this, you know what I mean? And uh, mm-hmm. just having, you know, if even one of the things that you say, like kind of like, turn that, that light bulb on for people. Um, I think it's going to help us all. And like you, you know, you hit the nail on the head. I talk to people about this all the time. It's like, you know, why, like, why would you invest, you know, $10,000 in a program or 15,000 in a program or whatever? It's like, well, how much are people investing in, in a year of college? 80,000, a yeah. hundred thousand, 50,000, right? With like the hope that you learn something and get a piece of paper that like, maybe you can join a company, right? It's like, I'm, you know, I'm working with Cole, and uh, I didn't go to college. <laughs> I went to college for like, you know, I think a semester. And it's like businesses now, like all they care about is like, what skills do you possess, right? Yes. What's, uh, you know, how are you going? Like, it, here's how I'll put it. 
if you go in front of a company, right, and you have a degree that says you've taken some classes to be good at marketing, or if you've worked on a team that is actively spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in ad spend and learning like what's actually working in the marketplace, the company is gonna go with the person with the actual hands-on experience mm -hmm. than the person that has this piece of paper that, again, learns some stuff about marketing and communications, you know what I mean? So, um, sorry, did you wanna let, add let something me, on there? Yeah, let me walk you through a process. So you go to school, and I've been to college. College is great for networking and for getting a lot of money in scholarships, <laughs> which people don't do. Because I went through it. I raised, I, I, when I went to college, I raised six figures in scholarships and uh -huh. used that when in real estate. Networking, free money to pay for everything, which people don't do. So you go ahead and get the job. And if, if you're not, if it's not a real skill, engineering, um, Doctor, becoming a teacher, lawyer, lawyer yeah. stuff, you know, then you're just, you know, you didn't pay let's say the typical 50,000 to go get a $30,000 job to be in debt for 20 years. Yep. It's something that I, I went to college. I have never used, and this is the key. I was at UPS. I got a telecommunications degree, which is uh, IT now. When I graduated, UPS paid for school. They knew I was in school. My boss goes, you know, you make more money in operations. Nobody in operations had um, a degree. I was like, you knew I was in college for two years. Now you're telling me this? So <laughs> I'm not knocking college. I still invest with people from college. But if you're not getting free money and networking to grow, look at this. You invest into a skill program, not not, not to get rich. Invest in upgrading your skill for a year. And let's look at me, six months. I am taking more home than, um, for example, I have two people who just graduated from school, become doctors, $400,000 in debt. I spent, well, I'm not going to say how much. I spent way less than that. Let's just say, so I spent $10,000 to learn a skill from RCA. I'm already $110,000. They have a $40,000 job until their skills get better as a doctor. Does that make any sense? Well, yeah, 000. dude. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> and, and sometimes it's not even like them getting better. It's just like, you, you're there for a certain amount of time. It's like, oh, I get to ask mm -hmm. for a, you know, an extra couple bucks an hour. <laughs> well, I, yes. I know obviously it's different like being a doctor, but it's like, it, it more comes with time as opposed to with this. Like, like you said, it's like you start at, you know, for example, let's say you're making 20,000 or I mean, I mean, directly, direct example, right? You made, you know, mm -hmm. over a three month period, you made 40,000. And then in a single month, you like literally quadrupled what you're making in a month, more than quadrupled in a month, in a month's time, just by, you know, positioning it in a little bit of a different way. Yeah. And people go, <laughs> it's like, what well, if you don't make that next month? Uh, if I don't make it, I'm going to still make something. But I have a skill that I can take to another company. I have the skill now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not knocking college. It's just you want to make $200,000 a year and you choose to be a teacher. That doesn't make it's just you, And you choose a doctor or a lawyer because you go in for the money. So, yes, it's a passion for some people. But if it was a passion, you'll go work at a free clinic somewhere. Mm -hmm. So like, you go into college to make money. And I don't, I'm not knocking a doctor or lawyer. If you raise, if you raise scholarship, yeah. But I have friends who just graduated $400,000 in debt with the $80,000 a year job. And um, that's just, you know, you invest here and you're going to make six figures and make the same amount of money as people if you develop the skill. Because when you go to college, you are developing a certain skill. It's just, will the market pay you for that? Mm. And you have the opportunity here. And I try to stress that to people. And especially if you're looking for biz op and it's, it's nothing wrong with having your own digital marketing agency and stuff. If you put in the time, it's just when I take home that 72 or whatever it is at the end of the month, let's just say 40,000. That's my 40,000. I didn't have to pay ads. I don't have to pay anybody. And that is the difference. You are working for somebody. You are growing, growing the company. It's just, I'm not fitting the bill. And I've ran my own company. I understand. I'm not fitting the bill for the marketing, taking care of whatever needs to have that company running. And that's the opportunity. And with remote closing, you could be an entrepreneur. You don't have to own it, but if you help any company grow their bottom line, you get all the perks and the benefits. Mm -hmm. And that is what's happening here. So, uh, you know, click that button, do it. What do you have to lose? You're going to spend the money anyway. People yeah. act like, oh, <laughs> you're going to spend it on something anyway. No yep. matter if you didn't come here, you're going to try to buy a $19 program. They go upgrade you to something you didn't even want to do. So well, if that, that, or like, you know, they're going to spend it on some shoes or they're going to spend it on, you know, dinner or they're going to spend it yeah. on, you know, going out to the club or they're going to spend it on, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah, they're going to, the money is going to be spent. It's just a matter of, 
where is it going to be spent and are you actually mm. making a return on the money that you spent yes. they're going to go buy a you know a car that you know the, the in new, the new you know bronco or the new uh, electric mustang whatever it is right it's like it, where is that money going and, and are you making a return on it that's the mm. question that i would ask um and, and the reality if you're hesitant you came to rca to look <laughs> rca ain't gonna chase you Mm-hmm. You're he- why are you hesitant on something you want to improve in your life? I know it's it, it, it's scary, uh, but technically, you came to RCA. RCA didn't go looking for you. You saw the ad. RCA mm-hmm. didn't call you. You clicked the button. But if you're looking to upgrade a skill, I, I always tell people, T, T, T. These things take time. But if you are going to work at a job, even at McDonald's, they're not putting you on a fryer right away. You have to go through training. Mm. So why would you do it on a job and that for your own self? Mm-hmm. Good man. I think honestly, that's um. I think that that'll probably wrap us up because I think we we talked pretty much about everything on here. Any last uh, any last things that you would say to somebody or you know parting words in general? Someone listening to to this episode. And it's any skill you take if, if you're going in to get better. Uh, whether it's losing weight, but if you're on with this, you're, you're trying to increase your income. I call it my 90 for 90. If you have a full-time job, take this right now, write it down. Block out 90 minutes every day for skill, learning and skill. So if it was RCA, you block out 90 minutes or more. You work in 90 minute blocks for 90 straight days. You will leapfrog to hers. So what I mean is when you got home, you close, you put the kids in the room, turn the TV off, you turn off all the um, tablets and everything. For 90 minutes, you work on this skill. And for um, and you learn, and then the next day you do it. Do it for 90 straight days. You will be more skilled than the average person looking at the same offer you're looking at. That's the only thing I have. And it, once you get there, remember TTT, these things take time. You will up your game. It is a never level. Your life will change. Good man. All right, Mr. Charles, appreciate you jumping on this uh, episode number two of the RCA podcast. For those of you that are listening in and you've heard enough, you're like, all right, I need to, I need, I need to understand that things take time. I'm tired of, you know, the situation that I'm currently in, or maybe not even tired of it. Maybe you're just looking for a better opportunity. I'm down in the description, either here on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube or in the uh, show notes on the podcast, um, click the link. Uh, it's going to lead you to a video, 19 minute video. It's not going to sell you anything. It's just going to give you more, a little bit more insight from uh, our founder, Cole Gordon, um, who went from being a broke car- bartender and in like literally 12 months time w- was, or actually, no, I'm sorry, three months time. Um, was able to go from 1500 bucks a month to uh, about 40,000 a month um, being a remote closer. So the video will break it down 19 minutes at the end of that video. If you do decide that you want to learn a little bit more about how you can partner up with us here at RCA and learn about that, of course you can, but uh, the video will give you value nonetheless and you'll have the action plan to be able to at least start implementing some of the stuff, um, you know, to, to jump into to the remote closing uh, world, we'll say. Um, so one last really quick thing, you know, again, thanks to, uh, to Charles for jumping on here. And if you have any questions for us, definitely let us know. All the information will be down in the show notes or the description. Uh, Aaron here for the Remote Closing Academy podcast, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Top soon. Peace.